Uh, hey, Bill, been seeing this girl for a few months now. I'll skip to the nuts and beans of the story. During a conversation about sex, not during sex, I asked her a basic question about what she likes during sex. A conversation she initi initiated, I'll add. She got annoyed and said I should know what she likes during sex. I was speechless and the conversation changed. I spent days thinking about this. Is she, she's out of her mind, right? Yes. She is out of her mind. Um, I don't think she's out of her mind. She might be, not be comfortable with saying, you know, what she wants. Um, but that, that I find that is uh, females have that thing. Like, you know, when they get mad at you, but they don't, you don't even know they're mad at you. And then they get mad because you don't notice that they're mad. And it's like, well, why didn't you say something? It's like, you know, you didn't notice I, I was sitting there with my fucking, you know, looking out the window. It's like, I thought you were looking out the window. Listen, here's something. You don't have to put up with that shit. You don't have to get in an argument with her. Okay, you don't have to be fucking mean about it. I would just be like, you know, I would, you know, have the conversation again. Just, just, I would revisit, just say, listen, you know, I only brought that up, or you brought it up actually, but like, I'm just interested because I care about you and I want you to be enjoying having sex with me. But um, I don't know if you noticed, I don't work at a carnival as a mind reader. So, I mean, don't say shit like that. You know what I mean? I don't know how old you guys are. Um, but like, that's, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm guessing she's more uncomfortable about talking about it. But if she's just like, but if that's like her attitude in general that you should just know and you should like figure it out, like um, she's this giant mystery and fascinating person. Like I can tell you that uh, personally, that would get old quick for me. Uh, that's not an adult. An adult like communicates and, uh, you know, like me, you know, <laughs> how good I am at communicating, you know, screaming and yelling and having murder fantasies. Um, murderous fantasies, I should say. All right, deleted all my apps. Hey, Bill, I deleted all the social media apps off my phone. I only use it for email, phone, and text. It's a different world, Bill. I still use it for music, but no YouTube. That's amazing. Um, my job doesn't require me to get more than five or six emails a month, so I don't need to monitor that as well. I'm two months sober. I'm sharing this because you've talked about how addicted they are. Have you tried this? One of the tricks is to always have a book with you. I've read three books since the start of October. If I go to reach for my phone, I reach for the book. It becomes an addictive escape. Well, Jesus Christ, a light at the end of the tunnel. That was amazing. Well, if I wasn't in the business that I'm in, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't be on social media. Um. I think I would still be on YouTube and then I'm I'm on every streaming platform to watch movies. I'm sort of addicted. I like watching movies about cars or that have cool cars in them, old police cars and shit like that. And, um, you know, that's the genre that I like. I like watching movies from the 1960s and 70s and I just like looking at the cars and, you know, the clothes and the music and the style and all of that shit. That, I don't know why, but that shit will never get old to me. Um, like, there's a few things that I follow of, like, they'll show shit. Someone will have, like, video of, like, the 101 highway in the 70s. And I just look at all the cars and I try to name all of them. And then I get fascinated, too with the mix of cars, you know, where we tried to do that on F is for Family, where I was just like, okay, this takes place in the early 70s. In the early 70s, every car wasn't from the early 70s because that would mean everybody had the money to buy a new car that year. That's not how it worked. People drove new cars all the way to cars like 10 years old. Um, people in that were in high school in the early 70s maybe even drove a car from the 1950s, which wasn't considered a classic. It was just considered a piece of shit, out of style car. Um, which is funny because I follow this 
thing on Instagram that it's like something like old school muscle cars or something. And it's all like these Polaroid pictures of guys with their modified muscle cars from the 60s that did them in the 70s, back when they would jack up the back end and put the slicks on the back, you know, more rubber on the road, more traction or whatever. Like they would take them down the drag strip and everything that they were doing to those cars was lessening the value of them, um, which was hilarious because to them, they were just fucking cars that were seven and eight years old. Now they're like classics. So I find that like fascinating, like, um, um, what's his face? Uh, James Taylor and uh, Dennis Wilson, the drummer for the Beach Boys, did a movie called uh, Tulane Blacktop or something like that. And what was funny was the, they were going from town to town and how they were making their money was they were having drag races with people. And the car that they drove around in, I believe, was a 55 Chevy Bel Air. And it was just like primer body, you know, everything just pulled out of it. You know, it's a race car, so any, they don't want to have any extra weight in it. Um, did have a passenger seat in it or whatever. But like, I was looking at the, that thing going like, these guys are just like beating the fuck out of that car. Pulled out the original engine, stuck something else in there. And uh, if they had just left that car all original and hung on to it for a little while, they could have made way more money than they were in that movie, you know, as those characters drag race in the car. So I find all of that shit, like, fascinating. I like being on, like, that part of the internet. But uh, I kind of have to be on social media because of uh, the business I'm in. But I think that's great that you're reading, like, books and stuff like that. That's why I'm kind of, like... You know, I've been taking these drum lessons. I'm going to take this, these French lessons too because I'm trying to combat because I'm 100% addicted to my phone and staring at it. And like, you know, I'll be out with my wife and she'll be like, all right, no phones in the meal. And I just feel myself like, just like not even thinking and just grabbing for my fucking phone. So um, I think that's great that you're doing that. And that's something to aspire to, to be reading more. Um there's actually a comedian, uh, Todd Parker, that wrote this really fucking good book. Um, of course, I can't remember the fucking name of it right now, but he's going to come on the podcast and promote it. But I started reading it. I was really enjoying it when I was on the road. And then I forgot to take it on the road. And I kind of got out of that habit of like reading. So I'm going to bring it on the, this next trip that I have. So when Todd comes on the podcast, uh, hilarious comic, by the way. And he actually, the first time I ever did stand up, it was a contest at Nick's Comedy Stop and he was one of the judges. So he saw me the first time I ever did stand up. Um, so that's always like a running joke that he didn't vote for me as the best one or whatever. Um, but he's a really just a great guy and a really talented guy. So I'm going to, you know, and it's a fun read. So I should get back into that. So I think that's cool. You know, I'm doing like that 10 day detox from like all like stimulants and everything. Like maybe, uh, you know, I should monitor my uh, social media use or something like that. I have no idea. I don't know. But Instagram's fun, though, because I like looking shit up. Like, I, I'll tell you, the fucking truck I'm in love with right now is the Ford F-450 regular cab. You know, the dually with the pickup back end. I mean, that is just the fu one of the sickest fucking trucks I've ever seen. And... um you know, it's getting close. My F-250 is going to be here soon, man. I can't believe it. That's going to be great. Uh, cruising around in that fucking thing. Big fucking goofball that I am. Yes.